We are gathered in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends in Christ, in this Lenten season, we have heard our Lord's call to struggle against all that keeps us from loving God and each other. God never wearies of forgiving sin and giving the peace of reconciliation. On this night, let us confess our sin against God and our neighbor, that we may be reconciled with God and with one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin, and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. And now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And give us the will to serve others as he was the servant of all. Your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they shall take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join with its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be 
divided in proportion to the number of people who eat it. This is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night. I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. And on the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be assigned for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. A reading from 1 Corinthians. For I received from the Lord what I was handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and to go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them till the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during dinner, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hand, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, if you are going to wash my feet, Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am going to do, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash your feet, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, he put on his robe and had returned to the table. He said to them, Do you know what I have done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your teacher and Lord, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. 
By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. This time last year, many of you were probably at least making a mental list of what you needed to pick up from the grocery store or to prepare a meal to celebrate Easter. Perhaps a spiral lamb or a turkey, all prepared with wonderful side dishes and desserts. Perhaps the family or good friends came over, or you may have gone to their house. Eating is an important, essential part of our lives. And many memories that we have revolve around eating. As I was growing up, I remember going to my grandparents' house every Sunday for dinner. My aunt and uncle and their families would gather, and we would all sit around this big rectangular table in the dining room covered with a beautiful lace tablecloth. My grandmother would serve the meal that was the product of many hours of preparation, all done in love for her family. I have few memories of my grandmother without her apron on. She was constantly cooking and baking for her family, as was common then. Our relationships with each other in the family were strengthened by this time together each week. <clears throat> Our stomachs were filled, but we were filled in so many other ways also. The important part of gathering around the meal are the people who mean the world to you and the memories of these precious moments. In the Bible, we have all kinds of accounts of meals passed on to us, all amazing gifts of God. For instance, we recall Abraham and Sarah preparing and serving a calf, tender and good when three strangers come to visit and the manna provided in the wilderness for God's people on their way to the promised land. We remember the story of the prodigal son, how he was welcomed home with a feast far beyond his deserving. We recall Jesus feeding thousands with a few fish and loaves of bread. And of course, his sharing of the Passover meal with the disciples hours before his betrayal, his suffering and death. And it is, of course, the Lord's Supper that we remember tonight. But we are not gathering together tonight as one body, so we will not be receiving the Supper tonight. We will remember the Lord's Supper from last Monday, Thursday, and the Lord's Supper from when we normally gather each Sunday or each weekend for worship. But for now, our fasting of the Lord's Supper continues as long as we cannot physically gather together. You see, Luther reminds us that it is the Lord's presence that comes to us somehow in, with, and under the bread and wine that becomes the body and blood of Christ. And Christ comes to the table when the presiding minister in the presence of the gathered people proclaims the words that are instituted by Christ himself. The mystery of the Holy Spirit comes through faith that Jesus is indeed present. Present in the midst of the worshiping assembly. So even though we are hungry and thirsty, even though we are craving to receive, to take, to touch, to chew on Christ. We will see our Savior in other ways tonight and tomorrow and the day after that until we come together again as one body. Through words spoken and through the Spirit at work in the world, Jesus is there. Even in the world that seems so broken right now. Well, the world has always been broken since the sinfulness of humanity in the Garden of Eden. But the character of the brokenness of the world seems to be unfamiliar to us right now. This invisible force controlling our actions is a different sort of brokenness to us. But there's another force in the world which I think is stronger than the virus, and that's love. 
And where there is love, there is Jesus. The world hungers and thirsts for love right now. To know God is active in the world. To know Jesus is with each person. Think back to how the world used to be in, say, January, and how it is now. There's a striking difference. Our world of individualism is changing as we now hear the repeated mantra, we're in this together. We are growing through rough spots, growing pains as we adjust to this new normal. People are learning they don't need to hoard. We're learning that we can protect each other, that we must keep our distance. We're attempting to care for our health care providers and grocery workers and all our essential workers by using social distancing and by staying home and only going into public spaces when it's absolutely essential. We use good hand washing technique. We share love by wearing masks when we're in the store or other places where, where our distancing is less controllable so that we, again, can reduce the spread of the virus. We order out to help our restaurants survive. This sermon is being produced on Monday, so there may be even more ways that we care for each other by the time you hear this. All these actions are about love. Yes, love for ourselves, but love for all people. Our quilting group continues to make masks for hospitals and nursing home professionals and those who are immunosuppressed so that they may remain safe. These are things that are so important right now, and these are actions of love. Relationships with those we live with as taking on new meaning. We hunger and thirst for relationships. And perhaps now, the sacredness of relationships takes on more importance. In our gospel reading today, Jesus is gathered for a meal with people who are very important to him. Those who he has a sacred relationship with, his dear disciples. The meal, however, is not the most important part in John's gospel. There is no Lord's Supper in this gospel as we find in the others. This is a meal that is not on Passover, but is before. Instead of the Lord's Supper, Jesus uses another action, that of washing the disciples' feet. And the important part of the foot washing is Jesus' teaching about what it means. The setting of the scene is very important. It's almost like an old Western showdown. Jesus enters this gathering knowing what is about to happen, and then it's the end result is Jesus' betrayal. The Gospel writer John tells us that Jesus knows that the time of his death has come, and when he and his disciples gather, Jesus has already predicted before this that Peter will deny him three times. Of course, Peter doesn't understand this and is confident that there is nothing that could diminish his zeal for Jesus. Absolutely nothing. But Jesus isn't convinced because he knows what is to come. Jesus also knows that right after this foot washing and teaching, his friend Judas is going to betray him. The disciples don't know this, but Jesus knows. And he announces this to them. He says, the one to whom I give this piece of bread when I dip it in the dish is the one who will betray me. So Jesus dipped the bread in the dish and he gives it to Judas. We're told Satan, the tempter, enters Judas. And Jesus told Judas to do quickly what he needs to do. Once Judas leaves, he sits into motion Jesus' arrest. Jesus is betrayed. And he will be taken into the hands of those who can move forward with his crucifixion. Now we know what's going to happen. And Jesus knows what's going to happen.
But the amazing thing about this evening is that Jesus loves all of those gathered with him. A betrayer, a denier, and the rest who will abandon him. This is a very emotional and poignant moment. People filled with grief and anxiety and fear. As Jesus' ministry with this imperfect group of friends will draw to a close. The reality is Jesus is washing the feet as an act of serving them and loving them. If it were anyone but Jesus, we would fully expect that that person would stand up at the table and announce that this whole thing is a fraud. I know it's going to happen and you know it's going to happen and I got evidence to prove it and I'm not going to put up with it. Maybe part of us would like Jesus to be a divine whistleblower. Someone who, who doesn't let them get off the hook. Who stops them in their tracks from their untoward behavior. Who punishes them. Anyone who has ever been betrayed knows the sting it brings. Knows the feeling of wanting to get even to get revenge, retribution. We see it as marriages fall apart. We see it in business agreements that aren't worth the paper they're written on. In the church in Corinth, in our second reading, the bread and wine of the Lord's Supper are broken and shared first of all with the rich, and many times none left for the poor. How can a congregation be the body of Christ when people are excluded? Betrayal. But at this moment, Jesus doesn't show them what they are. Even though Jesus knows what's in their hearts. Their betrayal is exposed, but it's not a surprise to God. Dietrich Bonhoeffer marvels that we are continually surprised by sin. Though it's as common in us as it is in everyone else. But instead of focusing on our sin, John's Gospel is more focused on Jesus' love. Instead of recrimination for what they will be doing wrong as they betray, as they deny, as they avoid, we see who Jesus is. And from that we see who the disciples are and who we are to be for one another and for the world. This is Jesus, the light of the world. And he will love his own till the end. Jesus, our God of mercy, gets up from the table, takes off his outer robe, and ties a towel around himself. He pours water into a basin and begins to wash their calloused, dirty feet. Then he gently wipes them with the towel tied around him. Jesus knows what it's like to have love given through this experience of gentle touch and care and compassion. As Mary washed his feet with expensive oil and tears, now Jesus will share this love. Each and every one of these sinners who will fail him are gathered, including the one who aids in his death, Judas. Jesus becomes a servant, knowing full well the mixed motives of the group. And he's telling his disciples that they're going to have to do the same to each other. Not literally wash feet, but they are going to have to learn how to love one another and to serve others, even those who are out to harm them. Jesus has set an example for them this evening. The bottom line is serving each other out of love, emptying themselves for one another, not just the people who are nice to them. How easy it is for us to forget that nothing that we despise in another human being is foreign to us, that we are broken, but love is the healing bomb. God didn't hold us in contempt but became human for the sake of the world. For our sake, Jesus serves the world on the cross. Our God is one of love and mercy. And so before Jesus meets his enemies and moves to the cross to battle the biggest enemy, 
death, Jesus has important words to share with his followers. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you shall love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. This is the choice faced by all of us. Will we follow Jesus this hour? Will we follow Jesus tonight, tomorrow, this next week? And what does that look like in your life? We, my friends, are loved. Loved by a Savior who gave his life for you in order that you may have life and have it abundantly. We are the body of Christ in the suffering world. And we've been empowered to share that love and to serve one another. Even though we're without the Lord's Supper tonight, we are not without the Lord. Jesus assures us that he is with us always. The Spirit is leading and guiding us each moment of our lives. On the night in which he was handed over by God, Jesus walked the path to the cross in love for you and for the world, even your enemies. In his humble servanthood, we have received wondrous love. Amen.
is the body of Christ. As Jesus calls us to love one another, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. The response for each petition will be on your screen. Loving God, on this, the night he was betrayed, your son Jesus Christ washed his disciples' feet. We commit ourselves to follow his example of love and service. Lord, hear us. On this night, he prayed for his disciples to be one. We pray for the unity of your church. Lord, hear us. On this night, he commanded his disciples to love, but suffered rejection himself. We pray for the rejected and unloved. Lord, hear us. On this night, he accepted the cup of death and looked forward to the new wine of the kingdom. We remember those who have died in the peace of Christ. Lord, hear us. Receive, O loving God, our prayers, and grant that we and all people may know the mercy of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
surround me A pack of evildoers Closes in upon me They have pierced my hands and my feet I can count on my bones They cast lost, but in you, O oh Lord, be not far from me. O oh, my help, hasten to aid me. of the assembly I will praise you you who fear the Lord praise him all you descendants of Jacob give glory to him revere him all you descendants of Israel 